Believed to have been written in the 8th century BC, the Odyssey is one of the oldest and most important stories of all time. It's read all over the world, but today seldom in its original language of ancient Greek. In the Pioneer Valley, one group is trying to get back to Homer's original words. Ross Lipman takes us to Forbes Library and introduces us to the group on a reading odyssey of their own. If you're looking for something to read here at the Forbes Library in Northampton, odds are you'll be able to find at least one copy of one of the most widely published pieces of writing of all time. Homer's 8th century Greek epic, The Odyssey. Each version with a slightly different telling of Odysseus's journey, but the one thing that all of these have in common is there in English. But on the floor just above us, a group of Greek enthusiasts are trying to get as close to Homer's original scribings as possible by bringing a lost language back to life. <laughs> Let's do a little more, okay? Every Tuesday, Nicholas Gross leads a group reading the Odyssey aloud in ancient Greek. Gross was a college professor for over 40 years teaching Latin and Greek, and he's still teaching ahead of his 80th birthday with these volunteer students. These students are, don't think undergraduates, all right? I mean, when there was a time we had a missed class, they asked if they could have an extra assignment. The class pretty much works the same each week. Gross picks up where they left off in Odysseus's journey. And the man on. Reading line by line in Greek, and the group repeating it back. Okay. <laughs> this is followed by a member of the group, one of the students, translating the lines into English. But I alone kept my black ship outside. It's a slow process one that involves a lot of language deconstruction. Modern Greek and ancient Greek are what I would call synthetic languages, okay? In other words, the modern Greek word agapiondene, which is one word, uh, means they were in love with each other, that's seven words. So what you have to do in your head is rearrange the, the, la the language. Parastathmoisin ep udu. This is one of the smaller turnouts for the group, but the conversation is still lively. Escaping from Polyphemus is enough to make you cautious. <laughs> Something that Gross credits as one of the biggest benefits of the group being generally older. Because of their age, they bring a wealth of experience that undergraduates simply, you know, they're, they're not old enough to have that much experience. The, the, the name is to give you the idea of what she's like. Not just experience, but also patience and time. Translating the text alone before coming to the group is a lengthy process. For me, it takes three steps. I have to go once through the just make the sense and translate it for myself. And that is probably for 20 lines, three quarters of an hour. So altogether, for one page, it takes me at least an hour. That's over 12,000 lines. And depending on the size of the text in your copy, anywhere from 250 to 350 pages. And despite these exhaustive efforts, it's all still just an approximation a best guess effort. We, we really don't know what Homer said. That is, we don't know what it sounded like exactly. Yeah. But I try to do my best to read it aloud and have them read back because then we get some idea of what it must have sounded like. By pouring these hours into a language that's now separated us by centuries, the group is on an odyssey of its own. Yeah, let's do just a wee bit more. I guess what I'm trying to do is to get back there at the best I can because um, there's, uh, there's an awful lot lost 
And uh, th that's why I try to uh, re read aloud to maybe recover a little something. Yeah.